So, Genoa and Luca are now no more than private estates of the Bonaparte family. Ah, wonderful. Where will that man stop? If you tell me this still doesn't mean war, you're no longer a friend of mine. No, man is anti-Christ. First he has the Pope crown him Emperor of the French, then he gets himself crowned King of Italy. Is there no end to it? First of all, my cher ami, tell me how you are. No, oh, how can one feel when one's whole moral sense has been outraged? Say hello to my aunt. How are you, Madame Gera? Oh, how kind of you to ask, Prince. I'm very well. And Her Majesty the Empress. Thank you. I was with her this morning. A cold's a little better, thank God. And you? Affairs of state are a little pressing on everyone at this time. You're staying the whole evening, I hope. No, ma chère, I'm sorry. There's a party at the English ambassadors. I have to put in the theater. My daughter's coming to fetch me. Ah, la belle Hélène. That will compensate. Now tell me. I must know. I must be the first to know. What has been decided with regard to the Novosiltsov dispatch? What is there to tell? Well, it has been decided that Bonaparte has burnt his boats and that we are in the act of burning ours. Austria... Oh, don't speak to me of Austria. Austria doesn't want war. Never has. She's betraying us. Russia alone will save Europe. Our sovereign Alexander knows that. He knows it's his mission and his alone to crush the Hydra of revolution. You're so eloquent, my dear. You make me feel inadequate. May I have some tea? In a moment. I have a little thing to impart. Your son, Anatol, who is here, by the way, this evening, becomes less and less of a credit to you. It cost me 40,000 a year. I don't need to be reminded of it. Naturally. However, my purpose is a little more practical. Have you never thought of finding him a wife? Who? Princess Maria Volkonskaya. She has a brother, Prince Andrei, recently married Lisa Mike. Yes, of course. Yes, they'll be here this evening. The father is the famous Prince Volkonsky, who was retired from the army when the late Emperor was alive. Yes, I remember, an eccentric. But very rich. The daughter is not too happy, I can tell you. She'll be glad to escape. It's a kindly thought. You're taking up matchmaking as a career? It's an old maid's pastime. You're beginning early, Marcia. Then I'll begin my apprenticeship in your service. <laughs> I hear you have Pierre Bzuhoff staying with you. Well, since he inherited Bzuhoff's estate, I felt it my duty to take him under my wing. I do hope his manners have improved. He's so rich, nobody notices anymore. <laughs> huh? There's Lisa Volkonskaya now. Mm, adorable. Uh, if you get a chance to speak to her about her sister-in-law and my avatar. Don't worry, Prince. It shall be done. <laughs> How charming you look. Motherhood is going to suit you. Where is your husband? Oh, he was detained. He sent me on in the carriage. Come and say hello to my aunt. It's obligatory. I have a little thing I want to talk to you about later concerning your sister-in-law, Maria. Oh, I shall be seeing her soon. I shall be staying with the family while Andres wear home. How are you, Madame Shira? Oh, Princess Balkonskaya, how kind of you to ask. I'm very well. And Her Majesty? Yes, I was with her this morning. The cold is a little better, thank God. And you? Very well. Anatole! <laughs> Your father is here, you know. Well, you bring me someone much more interesting. This is Princess Lisa Bolkonskaya, Prince Andrei's wife. Trump. I beg you to stand. The servants will see to it. 
terribly sorry. I... Oh, it's of no importance. Things sometimes get spilled at my smiles. It's a hazard I accept. I'm questioning. <laughs> Well, how are you, Count? You're back in Petersburg, I see. Come and say hello to my aunt. Aunt, this is Count Bezuhoff, whose father died so recently. Count Bezuhoff, this is my aunt, Madame Shell. How do you do, Count? I knew your father many years ago. I was so sorry to hear of his death. Madame Shearer was with the Empress this morning, Count. Oh. How was she, Aunt, when you left her? I saw her this morning. Her cold was a little... Do you know the Abbe Moria? Oh, He's yes. He's the most interesting Yes, I've man. heard of his plan for permanent peace. It's most interesting, but quite impractical. You see, the whole thing is based on the misunderstanding of the nature of nationality. So, well, we'll discuss it later, shall we? Please. Ah. It's you, Princess Dobritskaya. What are you doing in Petersburg? I must get Boris transferred to the Imperial Guard. Oh, never mind what happened in Moscow. That fuss over the will was a fuss about nothing. Pierre was already the legal heir. There's nothing I can do about it. You should approach Romancev through Prince Golitsyn. I've tried everyone, but, but I get nowhere. Are you ready, Papa? Yes, my dear, yes. You must excuse me. We're expected the English ambassadors. Prince, I implore you, do this for me. Princess, I'm sorry, don't, really. Don't be sorry. Help me. Well, we shall be late. Yes, yes, I'm coming. Excuse no, me. No, Prince, listen. Listen. Every young man needs just one little piece of help in his career. He's entitled to it. Just one. He knew, I remember. My father was a good friend to you once. Papa. Be a good friend to my son just once. Anna, it's very difficult. But Boris will be transferred to the Imperial Guard, I promise. How's that? So, this Bonaparte, this Emperor of the French, so full of honor, so full of nobility, he would have us believe, sends his secret police across the border of a neutral country in dead of night, forcibly breaks into a young man's home, and backs him back into France. Interrogates him the following night, finds him guilty of a plot to assassinate Napoleon, takes him outside and shoots him beside a grave that was dug before the interrogation. Before? Before. Nothing, I assure you, Pound. From start to finish, the whole affair, but especially the arrest, was contrary not only to the law of nations, but to the laws of France. Andre! No, I disagree with you. I hope no agree with you. What, you, a soirée? What's happened? I knew I'd find you here. I'm Goodbye, coming to supper with you later. Have... Is that all right? Certainly not. Wouldn't dream of it. Splendid. Maybe a <laughs> I'm listening to this fellow. He's interesting. Hopelessly wrong, but interesting. Will you be home tonight? Uh, yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, It'll I was... It'll be nice to see you in for dinner occasionally. Oh, get this bear in shape for me. He's been staying with me a month, and this is the first time I've seen him in society. We'll do our best. Prince Balkonsky, isn't it? Vasily Kuragin, my daughter Elaine. I knew your father many years ago. Is he well? Yes. That he is retired. Russia has need of such men at this time. Lisa is sitting over there with Anatol Kuragin. Will you join her? In a moment. I hear you've enlisted for the war. General Kutuzov has been kind enough to make me his aide And Lisa? She'll stay with my family in the country. Oh, that's too bad of you. Robbers of the company of your charming wife. Uh, do you know the Picot Mama? He's the most knowledgeable man on the Berlin party. He's been in such a panic before. The murder of this young man brands Bonaparte once and for all as a common little cutthroat who has been thrust to the head of a nation by the exigences of the army. Rubbish, absolute rubbish. Bravo. The, the Bravo. execution of Duc Tonguin was a political necessity oh. of the highest order. Napoleon showed uh, immense spirit in not hesitating to assume full responsibility. Sure. Sure. No, I, I, I can tell you why. No, it's just that you... The, 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 the Bourbons fled from the revolution. One choice fled did they from have, the revolution, sir? leaving the people to... Uh, 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 and Napoleon, Napoleon alone was capable of understanding it, What's of quelling it. What's that got to do with well, it? 
the general good, don't you see? I mean, he couldn't stop the life of one man. Oh, the arguments of public good. Well, yes, of course. What other good is there? The, uh, the the people gave him the power to get rid of the Bourbons once and for all, and he used it. For regicide and counter-revolution. Oh. I am French, sir, and I know what I'm he saying. He used it for the rights of man, for emancipation, oh. from prejudice, for equality. My dear fellow, oh, but really such people. All you did was ruin Mademoiselle Cher's evening. Well. Hmm. Oh, my dear friend, could I let it pass? All that nonsense. One can't everywhere and always say what one thinks. However. What are you going to do? I don't know. Nothing interests me. All that education abroad and nothing interests you? Well, it's true. Why don't you join the army? Well, I've thought of that, but... Hmm. Now, this war against Napoleon... Now, if it were a war of freedom, yes, I could understand that. But to help England and Austria against the greatest man of our time? One can't always fight for one's own convictions. If that were the case, there'd be no wars. Wouldn't that be a good thing? <laughs> Perhaps, but it'll never happen. What are you fighting for? What for? I don't know. Because I have to. And because... The life I lead here is not to my taste. So, you're now an important landowner, Count. Yes, yes. Oh, the estate is vast. They tell me I'm very rich. It's all very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and how was Moscow? Did you go to many parties? Yeah, a few. Uh, the Rostovs? Do you know the Rostovs? No. Oh. I knew them when we were children. The charming people, really. And I hope you weren't as argumentative as you t were tonight. <laughs> Poor Anna Pavlovna. <laughs> One has to talk. I've just been arguing with your husband just now about the war. I can't make out why he wants to go. Nor I. Well, why can't men go without war? Can they not? When do you leave? Oh, don't let's talk about it. Who, when I think I'm to be deprived of my company of friends, and, and then I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Andre. I'm afraid. What of? I don't understand you. No. There's so much you don't understand lately. What is there to be afraid of? What egoists men are. For a woman of his own, he deserts me and shuts me up in the country. With my family. With your family. It's all one and the same. I shall be alone without my husband, without my friends, and he expects me not to be afraid. The doctor said you should go to bed early. Oh, he's considerate now. Lisa. Well, what have I done? Tell me. Oh, oh, no, no. Why should I mind if Count Buzufov is here? No, please, please. I've been wanting to ask you for such a long time. What have I done that you've changed so towards me? Lisa, I beg you to stop. Please, uh, don't upset yourself. This is all fancy, really. Really, believe me, because I do know. I assure you... But... No, no. An outsider has no right. I go. No, wait. Lisa, please. It's all right. Don't worry about me. You, you men must talk. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, André. Bonsoir, Lise.
Never, never marry, my dear fellow. That's my advice. Until you can say to yourself that you've done all that you're capable of doing. And until you cease to love the woman of your choice and see her as she is. Otherwise, you'll be making a cruel and irreparable mistake. Hmm. Marry when you're old and good for nothing else. Or you'll fritter away your life in trifles. Yes, yes, don't look at me in such surprise. What I say is true. My dear friend, I had no idea. I've never said this to anyone before. I say it to you because... Uh, because of the affection I have for you. I don't understand. You? You of all people. That's because you don't really know me. Even though you're my closest friend. You must have gained something from your marriage. As soon you'll have a child. What I've gained, I couldn't tell you. What I've lost, I could fill a whole evening talking about. You mentioned Bonaparte. Yes. You admire him? Yes. Yes, I do. One must, uh, because he's a man of such tremendous will. He is a mover of events. But he wasn't always. No, no. At Toulon, he was nothing, an artillery officer, until he showed them how to raise the siege. And then, step by step, he moved towards his goal. But while he did it, he was free. There was nothing for him but the goal. Tie yourself to a woman and you lose that freedom, the freedom to act, to pursue an idea. All your aspirations, all your abilities, wither away in drawing room. Women reduce everything to the trivial, to the banal. I never knew. <laughs> it seems so odd. I used to envy you. And yet you talk as if your life were wasted. But it can't be. You have so much. Everything lies in front of you. Mm, perhaps we shall see. Now, what about you? Oh, me. What is there to say about me? I have my freedom, unlike you, but not the least notion in the world of what to do with it. I don't think it matters. I think you'll be all right anywhere. Well, I hope so. <laughs> but look here. Do break with Anatole and his crowd. Yeah. Well, it passes the time. Uh, I mean, what can one do? One needs some excitement, women. But not Anatole's women. No. And you've been banished once from Petersburg. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. But seriously, he did invite me this evening. Uh, but I won't go. I have your word. You have my word. Oh, <laughs> 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 
the window for my hands on my arms and lose. Great! <laughs> in this house wrong except mine. Am I late? Three minutes late. That three minutes gone, three minutes wasted. Who could afford to waste three minutes a day? I'm sorry, Father. I've seen to the arrangements for Andre and Lisa. They'll be here soon. Excuses. Everyone always has excuses. The fact is, you've lost three minutes this morning. Now, how will you get them back? I can't give them to you. Well, the loss becomes mine as well. Order, young lady, order. What is order? The prime condition of successful activity. Exactly, exactly. To accomplish anything in our lives, we need order, a timetable. I'm sorry for The fact that Prince André and his wife are coming is no excuse for upsetting the arrangements of the household. Come here. Come on. Now, do you know what this is? No, Father. No. Your female mind takes no interest in such things. Why, I don't know, but it's always so. It's a drainage system for the east part of the estate. Now, my own architect said it couldn't be done, not like that. Well, he's a fool. He sees only the problems. Are you well? Yes, well. All right, then, sit down. This morning, we shall continue our work on triangles. Oh, uh, there's a letter for you from your... Moscow friend. <clears throat> oh, from Julie Karagin. I shall allow two more letters to pass, uh, but I shall read the third. You may read this one, Father. The third, I said, the third. You write much nonsense, I'll be bound. I'll read the third. And um, here's something else your friend sent, a book, a religious book. I looked through it. It's a lot of nonsense, like all religious books. Still, I don't interfere with people's beliefs. Now, put it away. And look at the diagram in the geometry book. Geometry books tell us more than religious books. Geometry books tell us how to calculate, which is more important than learning how to pray. I want to know, madam, why the two triangles contained in the figure may be said to be congruent. Well, come. 
Come on, we did this yesterday. Um, this side equals that side. Rubbish, girl, rubbish. Can't you ever learn anything? Oh, I give up, I give up. Yeah. No, this, this won't do, young lady. It won't do. Mathematics is a most important subject. Persevere, and you'll learn to like it. You don't want to be like all the other silly women in the world, do you? No, Father. Oh, good, good. Now, look at the theorem again, and when you know it, we'll start on the problem again. Journey? We nearly had a wheel off at Spassky Hill, I can't tell you. And what do you think? Andre has made me leave all my clothes in Petersburg. I don't know what I shall wear here. He says I shall have no use for them, no use at all. But you look <laughs> wonderful, so healthy, so radiant. <laughs> oh, it is good to see you here. Let me look at you both. You look tired, Andre. And you look thinner. Are you really going to the war? Yes, I must leave tomorrow. He abandons me here, and the Lord knows why. Oh, we'll look after you, you'll see. Oh, I nearly forgot. This is Mademoiselle Bourrienne, my companion. This, as you must have guessed, is my dear brother and his wife. Enchanté. We shall be the best of friends, and you must tell me all about Paris. <gasps> How is father? Still the same? Your eye may see some change. Same regular timetable, same walks in the garden, the lathe, the drawing board. Everything to order. I'm still not very good at geometry. I suppose we shan't be seeing him till lunch. He makes no exceptions, you know that. Take Lisa up to her rooms. I think she needs a rest after a journey. Oh, yes, I should like to rest. Oh, but I have so much to tell you. Petersburg was so lively this season. <laughs> Andre, will you be coming up soon? I just want to wander around a bit. Come. Everything is prepared. And I've just had a letter from an old friend, Julia Karagina, who sends me all the news from Moscow. So I can write all of yours from Well, Seacon. You've grown older. Yes, Prince. How is one to avoid it? But you look no different. How is my father? Is he well? He tires us all out with his energy. And Princess Maria? She never complains, but then she never did, even when you were children. No, she's... Uh, she's a good woman. Hm. Well, I'll just... See what's changed and what isn't. Well, well, here's the warrior after conquer Bonaparte. Now, mind you, set about it good and true, or he'll have us all on the list of his subjects. <laughs> How are you? I'm well, Father. I brought you my wife to take care of So I see, so I see. <laughs> oh, you've been in a hurry, I see. Too bad. The doctor told you to take plenty of rest, I suppose. Yes, he did. But take my advice and get plenty of exercise. Doctors are fools. The human body was made to have children under far worse conditions than ours. I'm glad to see you. Sit down. Sit down. <clears throat> How has your health been, Father? Oh, only fools and rakes ever need be ill. I'm too busy for bad health. Thank God for that. God has nothing to do with it. I keep myself busy. <laughs> now, tell me how the Germans in our army have taught you how to fight according to this new science called uh, strategy. It's rather a large subject, Father. Well, surely you must have some idea what's going to happen. The main Russian army is marching at this moment to join up with the Austrians. Ah, they won't have any boats by the time they get there. <laughs> Do you think an army can fight without boots, madam? No. But I imagine they must have thought of that. That's all you know. I think the supplies have been carefully worked out this time, Father. So, our friend Bonaparte is in for a bad timing. Now, who's going to give it to him? 
Those German generals who run our army, puh! Kutuzov is a match for him. Match? Well, we think this Bonaparte was some kind of general. A competent artillery officer, that's all he is. Who's defeated the best armies in Europe? Luck. He has good soldiers and half a dozen good marshals. Nay, Mira, who's a show-off. <laughs> Davu, Lunn, Soot and Bernadotte. But they're only good in the field. They can't plan anything not like a Suvorov or a Potemkin. Each age has its own heroes. Oh, you think I'm too old to know what's going on. Well, you're wrong. My mind's full of it. And I don't give half a rouble for your chances. That's my estimate. <laughs> well, Mademoiselle Bourrienne, here's another admirer of your powder monkey here, a French emperor. France, you know I'm no Bonapartiste. No? <laughs> <laughs> and what says my daughter-in-law? I detest him. Bravo. For what reason? Uh, that he usurps the rights of kings? That he destroys the feudal barriers between the estates of Europe? N no. I hate him because he takes Andre off to war. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there's no point in waiting any longer. Oh, and I just so want to have another little talk with you. There seems a little opportunity yesterday. Where's Lisa? She was so tired, she fell asleep on the couch in my room. She's such a treasure. She's so sweet and full of life. I'm very fond of her. You mustn't be too hard on her, you know. She has her little weaknesses, but who hasn't? Am I hard on her? I didn't realize. Well, a little unsympathetic. Think what it must be like for her to be parted from her husband in her condition and left alone in the country. Alone? Well, you know me. I'm not the best of company. She's such a merry soul. And father's always busy and Mademoiselle Bourrienne isn't... I don't really... like your Mademoiselle Bourrienne. Oh, no, you're wrong. She's very good and kind and she has no one. And father likes her very much. Tell me, Masha. Don't you find father rather trying? Father? No. Why? Seems to me he gets more difficult every day. I don't think about it. The only thing that upsets me is his attitude to religion. But he's really a good man. And that makes all the difference. You've changed, Andrusha. You've become hard. You judge people too severely, including yourself. Well, I must go. I have a great favor to ask of you. What is it? Promise you won't refuse. It will be no trouble to you, and it will be a great comfort to me. Well, tell me what it is. An icon. I want you to wear it and promise never to take it off. Well, if it doesn't weigh half a hundredweight. I'm sorry, my dear. Let me have it. I've been glad to wear it. He will save you in spite of yourself. And never take it off. I promise. And, Andrusha, God knows when we shall see you again. But try and be kind and generous as you used to be. Don't judge Lisa too harshly. Oh, come now, Masha. Have I complained of Lisa to you? Why do you say all this to me? I've said nothing. But you've been talked to, I think. Let me tell you something, Masha. I have no fault to find with my wife. I never had and I never shall have. 
But if you want to know the truth, if you want to know whether I'm happy, no. Is she happy? Why? I don't know. Let's go and find her. Oh, I'm sorry, Andre. I, I fell asleep. You're not leaving so soon. Yes. Oh, Andre! Just... No, no, no. Have my share. She'll take care of you. And the campaign won't be too long, I'm sure. Yes, but why do you have to go? Now, Lisa, we mustn't go through all that again. Oh, no, I want you to stay. Don't go. Don't go. Please. Lisa. No. No, no. Lisa. No, no. Lisa. No, Lisa. No, Lisa. Let him go quickly. <laughs> It'll all be over soon and he'll be back. You'll see. No, no, no. Oh, no. Lisa. Please. Please. Lisa. <laughs> Are you off? Yes. I've come to say goodbye. Well, kiss me and be done with it. Thank you, thank you. What for? Well, you don't dilly-dally and that's what I like. You're not tied to your wife's apron strings and I like that too. Well, if you've anything to say, say it. I can attend to two things at once. About Lisa, I'm sorry to leave her on your hands. Why talk nonsense? Say what you want to say. When the time comes for the baby, send to Moscow for a doctor. I know that if nature doesn't do her work, no one can help. Still, I'd rather you brought in someone from Moscow. It's her wish and it's mine. She's... she's frightened. All right. Yeah, it's a bad business, eh? What is? Your wife. I don't understand you. Still, there's nothing to be done about it. They're all alike. And you can't get unmarried again. I'll see to everything. Make your mind easy. <sighs> Come now, don't worry about your wife. Whatever can be done, shall be done. Give this letter to General Kutuzov and tell him I remember him with affection. But remember, you're my son. You need serve no one on sufferance. Well, come over here. I'm sure to die before you. So, here are my memoirs to be given to the Emperor after my death. And here is a banknote and a letter. It's a prize to be given to anyone who writes a history of Suvorov's campaigns. Send it to the Academy. I'll do as you wish, Father. Well, then, goodbye. You know, if you get killed, it will be a grief to me in my old age. But if I were to hear that you had not behaved like the son of Nikolai Bolkonsky, I should be ashamed! You needn't have said that to me, Father. There's something else. Huh? If I am killed and I have a son, Keep him here with you. Let him grow up under your roof. Not let your wife have him, as you wish. Now, we've said goodbye. Go. <laughs> 